You've heard New Year, New Me every New Year's, but have you heard New Year, New OC? It's a little secret in the art world. Hi. Thanks to you guys' overwhelming positive response on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, I've come out with a new shirt just for you guys. Use the promo code TRUECREW to get 10% off your purchase. Also, if you're over the age of 18, send me any photos you have with the shirts on Instagram, Twitter, or email me at whatever'sart at gmail.com. And I might just post your picture up on Instagram, Twitter, or even here on YouTube. Link down below in the pinned comment, and on to the video. Hey guys, whatever's art here with the new video. It's kind of a little different. We're gonna we're gonna go a little bit more like almost like a podcast, I guess, because it's just me and I'm just talking. So uh, a one person podcast uh, does that still count as a podcast? Is that still a thing, or just kind of a talk? Um, it's kind of from Mikey Mega Megas. I liked his ideas with just uh, draw with Mikey when he does that. I'm just gonna call mine artist talk. I just wanted to throw his name out there right now, just so uh, you know the credits there. Uh, just maybe just put his name down here in some like font right there. It's Mike Mega Mega. But I wanted to talk to you know some of my own viewers and some of my own people about you know issues that they might face as an artist or things that they're interested in as an artist or other things like that. I don't have the question right now currently as I'm recording for next week's question or whenever I plan to do this again. But I do have or I will have it up on a uh, the title. I'll have it up on the title and that way you'll just. Kind of have it out of the way. People have been telling me they want to hear just like a regular talk video, just my voice. Uh, I don't know why you people would want that, but <laughs> I mean, uh, I'm not gonna judge you for your torture. I'm just gonna just gonna sit here and be the executioner. All right? That phrase made no sense, but I'm trying to think of something. <laughs> but uh, this week we're gonna talk about artist negativity. Uh, I think it's a really big issue when it comes to being a beginner artist. Or just being an artist in general, and it's like the quickest thing that can be demotiva demotivating. I wanted to say maybe just plain and simple, just demotivating. I was gonna say as well. Um, uh, it can be a positive in a sense that if you are critical of your art, you can help yourself improve because you see the things that are wrong with your art. Um, it's great when you draw for a long time and then you realize oh man you know that artwork from before wasn't as good as I thought it was this one's better that's always a great thing to have but it can be kinda hard if you're just you know constantly looking at every piece of art you have as if it's just the same bad drawing um, and a lot of people don't judge themselves because like oh I can only draw stick figures and stuff like that um, I'm gonna show some of my old art throughout this but we all start somewhere and I think the issue is that we're too critical on ourselves, especially in the beginning. When you become more advanced, I feel like then having your create, uh, having some more of your criticism is more important. I'm trying to put a little extra right now. <laughs> Whether or not that's good, we'll figure out. But I'm trying to currently more so right now, so I can be more realistic about uh, Patreon numbers and if people are going to be interested in the artwork. Um, what I can do to try to spread my brand a little bit more and try to get more publicity in a sense. You guys saw the, or you should saw the uh, GB artwork we did last week. Uh, I thought that was really good, but I know there's still flaws with it and the fact that it's digital, people are going to underestimate more uh, versus if it was traditional. And it, you know, there's just a lot of factors that come into it, but I'm not going to tear it all the way down. I'm just going to take some parts of it. So what I also did was I asked people on Instagram for their questions, and I'm going to ask on Instagram, and I'm going to let you guys, you know, answer questions here. Uh, what are some things that they deal with? And the first one I have here is just art block. Um, and art block is kind of a, it's like, it's not even you being so much negative. It's just kind of a difficult spot to think yourself out of. You are, oh, this, this definition, I find that hilarious. Oh, here I go, describe the definitions. It's a difficult place to find yourself out of because it's almost like a lack of interest but not an overall lack of interest you want to draw but you don't know what and it's always it's always the funniest thing because you like you like grab the pencil you get this blank sheet of paper and then you stare at it 
and then you stare at it, and then you stare at it. And I feel like the the hardest version I've had with this usually for myself is I know I like to draw women, so that made that kind of easy for me. That's just kind of out of the book. If I'm not really drawing women, I don't kind of care. It's just as simple as it is. Uh, call me what you may. Oh, oops, alarm. Sorry, guys. Uh, call me what you may, but that's what I enjoy drawing. But it was always who to draw that gave me artist block. A lot of times I'd have to just flip a coin, and sometimes you have to just do stuff like that. You have to make a choice for yourself. I'd write like five answers uh, on a random number generator and just let the number generator pick it and then try to draw the artwork. You have to almost kind of force yourself in ways to get past this if you're working for something. So I'm working to draw women that look prettier to my own opinion or to make my artwork better and the anatomy better. So I have to draw women. Now if you don't have to draw something because you're not on a specific uh, niche that you're trying to draw. You can, you know, try to draw random things. I, you might want to go to, like, a random word generator and then just wait for it to, like, pick a name of an animal or maybe, like, a baseball glove or just random things can help you relax your brain because you're not so focused on it. You're just doodling, and that can help you out a lot. Uh, there's a lot of times that things that you didn't think would transfer while you're drawing actually can transfer while you're drawing, so I'd give it a look if you can. Uh... You know, just random number generators, uh, those are always good, and then uh, give a look to random item or random word generators, and just go from there, maybe try to make something out of the two words you get, uh, but there's a couple of sites like that. But yeah, that's what I mainly say for art block. Um, I guess these two are kind of the same, so one person said the constant pressure to improve and fearing not getting, uh, being good enough, and then the other one said, my work is never as good as I want it to be. So they're kind of in the same place, and it's more so about your mindset, I feel, than uh, anything else. Let's just say it like this. Let's make it like a basic thing. Let's say my artwork sucks, all right? Your artwork sucks. My artwork sucks. So we already have that out the way. That's like the most negative you can technically get with that. It's just you are a bad artist. What you should think about it as is, is this bad art? better than last time. That's as simple as it gets. If you lower it all the way down, if you kind of if you kind of bring down your expectations a bit, cuz I had I had such I had so oh my gosh, I have so many problems. I wanted to draw an like art germ the moment I started. And the moment you complain or compare yourself to it, you're going to realize that you're not there and it's going to frustrate you. You should only use those examples in order to motivate yourself, like I said in the video that my top five tips to improve uh, with Sakimi chan that I see are almost like a Dragon Ball Z comparative I've changed it in my mind so I can visually see it as a positive to strive for so I see her as a rival in order to make my artwork better or to her level uh, not out of spite not out of anything like that but out of admiration that I want to try and become competitive in that sense but if you can't do that, I would stay a little bit away from looking at other people's art and just work on your own for a second. Look at more anatomy. Look at more, um, try to do some more drawing classes. If you can look at videos online for uh, how to get the right proportions, because proportions have, have been awful for me this whole time. It's still bad right now. <laughs> but some of you who watch me think my proportions are really good. Some of you think the opposite, and I also agree with you. <laughs> but there are other people who think I am, and it's, you know, that you can't help what it is. People think that certain people are good. It's as simple as it is. I, I don't think I'm that great. Some people think I'm good. That's about it. Uh, so you can't really judge your art based off other people's arts. You can't really base, judge it based off other people's opinion. Do you enjoy it a little bit more? Just like the little subtle differences. Is there something small in it? Do the eyes look better? Does the hair look better? Does, does uh, if you're, I don't know, like you're drawing reptiles or something, uh, do the scales look better? Just give yourself small moments of praise. You can go, because you're, it seems like you'd already be in a negative mindset anyways. So give yourself just like a little bit of positive movements to go with. You need that positivity in order to keep taking steps forward. You do need to be realistic, but I feel like a lot of people, especially online with art, um, 
they hammer it down so much and don't remember the fact that when you just started artwork, it was really hard just to start. I feel like a lot of people, they just like completely forget and they go full on art critic online, you know, um, and they don't really think about like, it's tough. It's really tough. It's, it's a very daunting looking skill to people. Um, I guess, so the next question, usually, I guess the same, that's another one that I'm not good enough, the usual thought or feeling that I'm not good enough. It's strong, so I guess that kind of goes with the same one that I just said before. Um, now, here's another one. Uh, why can't I do things like that? So I guess when you see a drawing, you kind of go, why can't I, you know, draw to that? I guess it's sort of the same, too. Draw into that level. I guess what I would just say to you is, you know, just be realistic for the sense of, it's practice. That's about it. And you shouldn't feel down or bad about yourself for not being able to do it right now. You have to fail to succeed. Um, and a lot of times, I feel like that's kind of the issue with just growing up as people. We're not really taught that failure will make you successful. We're taught that you will be successful and then be more successful, which doesn't really make too much sense in a way. Because if you're always successful, one, you're going to get lazy. That's usually a common trait. Um, you're going to be like Cell in Dragon Ball. You're going to think you're really tough. Gohan's going to go to Super Saiyan 2, and you're not going to know what to do because you've never trained. Frieza trained. Here's here's my terrible anime references because I'm because <laughs> I'm a weeb. Frieza trained for one month, and then got to Super Saiyan God level. That's all he had to do to beat Super Saiyan Goku. That legendary Super Saiyan he was scared of his whole life. Had he failed once before meeting Goku, he would have killed him because he would have trained because he wouldn't have want to fail again. And when Goku turned Super Saiyan, it wouldn't have mattered because Frieza trained before. He was already prepared for this thing, but he never did. Winning all the time is not good for you. It's like the... It's like when uh, Neji got stomped by Naruto. Like, Naruto expects to maybe lose. Neji was so in his mindset, and that fight was a little cheap at the end because he had the Nine-Tail Fox Chakra, but it's the fact that he didn't expect it. There's so many, there's so many examples that my nerdy brain's like, oh, oh, let's use them right now. Um, I was watching some introspective video on Final Fantasy VII and Sephiroth's biggest flaw is his, uh, his arrogance, because he was the number one soldier. So when Cloud throws out his Omnislash, a move that Sephiroth has never expected before, he doesn't know what to do and dies. It's, he's done it twice. He literally dies twice like that. <laughs> Omnislash version 1, and Omnislash version, was it 5 in Average Children? It's some number that's not 2. Um, but yeah, you have to be expecting yourself to fail now and again, and you shouldn't beat yourself up for it. We all fail. I could show you many clips of my artwork just being terrible. There are so many sketches that have not made it past my my email. I usually have to email, email myself my own artwork so I can put it on my phone. But it never made it to that email. They never made it out that folder. They never made it to the export button. <laughs> they were terrible. There's some artworks right now I think are terrible. <laughs> but I post them anyways. Because it might help somebody else. They're just, it's just, it's funny that we all have this mindset. Even uh, some big artists I've talked to before, uh, they, they're they really critical of their art. Sakimi Chan, I've had one conversation with her over Patreon or whatever, and she talked about, I'm going to keep it really kind of uh, a little hush hush, but she talked about before a lot of people making judgment on her art. In a sense, she didn't seem bothered by it. She didn't seem bothered by it mostly at all. But uh, she did talk about the fact that she still gets it, and she's like, she, how many followers on Instagram does she have? Wait, let me. You guys can hear some clicking sounds. How many followers on Instagram does she have right now? Followers don't mean everything. I just think it's funny when we really take it into consideration. Um, Game and Chan, her artwork. She's got 700k followers. She has 700k followers, and she still gets that stuff. It's gonna happen. Like, <laughs> so let's see. It's okay to fail. It's okay to fail. Uh, I used to promote my artwork too, on big Instagram art pages, and I was really like, again, you might think I'm terrible now, and that's fine. I, I com completely consider it. But I was even worse then, and I shared that to like thousands of people, and there were just hundred. There was like hundreds of comments of just. What is that man, you know, that's not a woman, that's a man, the, this, your chins are terrible, 
oh, what is that? I vomited. I'd rather watch Boku no Pico. I got those. I got those so many times from people, and some of them are really funny. The Boku no Pico one was disgusting, but it's hilarious. But <laughs> there's so many like, there's so it's it's so like not worth your time. You're gonna feel upset. You're gonna feel sad about it. Like, oh man. I couldn't do it, but it's not worth your time. Reddit bashed the spit out of me, and I talked about that in the five tips video. I'll leave that alone-ish. Uh, but they came at me full fury <laughs> for making that video. They did not like that video. <laughs> uh, and it was just me giving my tips, because I figured I was giving tips to you guys. But I came off as arrogant to those people um, in, in a general sense, and I kind of agree with them. But still, I don't think it was still warranted that. But it's going to happen. It can happen. You just have to accept it, and it's fine. Failing is okay. You're not stupid for not getting something. We're all learning. Don't let people on the internet who are acting arrogant about like, oh, well, when I just started drawing, I, I started drawing uh, Picasso and all the anatomy in the world. I knew what everything was when I was blindfolded. Like, the, people like to gas themselves up. Um, let's go to our next couple of questions. So, uh, another one I think it's more of the, uh, it's not good enough, it's so terrible, I hate my art. As I said, you gotta be okay with yourself failing. Your artwork's not always gonna look most beautiful, but every time you draw, you're getting more mileage to become better. Um, this one's a little bit more interesting. When I was a kid, uh, they said my girls were too sexy, so I stopped drawing, you know, women, in a sense. So, this is kind of on the flip side of, people aren't always gonna like what you draw. There's a lot of artwork... I do not like um, but I feel like if you don't like something and you don't have anything creative to say about it leave it alone uh, there's a lot of stuff on Twitter uh, and if you can follow me on Twitter I'm looking at you I'm judging you a little bit <laughs> that I don't want to see um, I've had to mute a lot of pages I'm not interested in at all not in the slightest but I'm not gonna judge you for it. It's what you like to do. This is we get one life in here And it's like why should I have to be so concerned about what you enjoy when we're not the same person? We're all gonna go eventually so I might as well enjoy while I have the chance <laughs> um, A little conflicting. I'm a I'm gonna throw it out there. I'm a Christian so on that end there are a lot of Christians who are kind of like that they're kind of pessimistic about every everybody else's kind of viewpoints and their lifestyles and I don't like that either um, I'm gonna stay out of it for too much I'm just gonna go on my little quick thing Jesus said the whole thing about who can throw the first stone and I don't believe that a lot of us could throw a stone at all <laughs> so that's my opinion on that uh, from that sense of it but on an artistic sense art is expression what do you expect when people want to express themselves? They're going to draw what they want because it's expression. So specifically for you, cause especially because you're a, you're a decent friend on my art Instagram and stuff like that as well, you shouldn't have to feel bad about it. Just, you know, draw sexy girls. That's what you're trying to do. That's what you're trying to do is what you're trying to do. Like The other thing, too, is even if they wanted you to stop, you have to get it out of your system in a way, kind of. It's like it's going to bother you that you haven't done it yet. You know, there's some things that I haven't drawn. I don't, there's certain things that I just, I just don't draw. I haven't put in my mind. I'm not interested in it. But, like, I know that if it was bugging me all day, I'm at least going to have to sketch something. Like, something. It's your artwork. It's your money. It's your journal. Like, who, who's going to be able to tell you <laughs> what you can do with it? You know, it's kind of, it's just, it's just stupid. So don't let them, don't let them get on you. And I know it was when you're younger, too. So it made it a little bit harder because, you know, it's kind of, imprinted it's like in your head but uh you know you just gotta slowly fight it they say it takes like a month to get off an addiction and I feel like a lot of these kind of issues are emotional addictions um, they say like if you feel sad often your brain will get hooked to feeling sad a lot it enjoys all the endorphins that your body releases when you express all this emotion so if you're like a really angry person and you don't know why but you've always seemed to be angry for a really long time your body might just be hooked on being angry it just likes the adrenaline so you have to replace it maybe slowly with the adrenaline or the I mean, my bad, the endorphins of being happy so it's okay like you know you're gonna have to work in it slowly I don't like to draw men too much uh, but I'm still trying to do it every now and again. It's always just kind of like a push. 
uh, push and pull. You gotta just let your brain relax. You're gonna feel sad sometimes. You're not gonna be like over positive it and just forget about it all super willy nilly. But you'll be able to do it over time. It's it's definitely something that's doable. Um, so here's the next one, I guess. So I guess these are all kind of the same one. And I feel like, see, it, that's what I mean. There's a lot of people who think, just like you, you're feeling like this. I'm never going to improve. Uh, the other one is, I keep thinking that I should drop it. It'll never be as good as the people I look at. And see, that's exactly what I was talking about before, is it's just, uh, this kind of stuff, looking at other people's artwork, can be such a detriment in a way if you do it too much. Um, I think the term is just art envy, right? Uh, and there's a lot of videos on that, a lot of helpful videos from people on that. So I would still give that a look. Uh, I still gave more of my analysis on it towards the beginning. I'll go back over it just a little bit. It's just the fact that even right now, I don't think I'll ever improve. Every time I improve, I'm baffled that I improved. <laughs> it is like I'm gonna, I'm gonna be like silly right now like I'm being 100% for real it is so difficult for me to tell whether or not I've improved at all and then when I look back and I'm like oh okay I obviously improved a bit my lines definitely aren't chicken scratch anymore but even then it's kind of like uh these recent pinups I've been drawing I'm kind of like mm, is it good enough and then I feel bad when I do people's requests but I don't feel like I've done it well enough like I didn't do like the full throttle like I'd like to do let me turn on my mic a little bit because it's getting a little it might be a little bit loud um if I don't do the full throttle like I'd like to do for people I want to make their artwork they're the characters they want to see like super bomb sexy and really pretty and you know like uh 10 out of 10 and then when I don't do it or if I feel like I don't do it I feel like I've disappointed them and I, am, I, I, I feel that's why I don't like taking requests too much one I have to be really interested in what I'm drawing or otherwise I just I won't focus at all uh, so again, if if I could focus, then I would draw more dudes. But I, I just cannot focus while I'm doing that. I just lose and unfocus out, and I can't pay attention to it. But at the same time as well... Um, oh, man, I actually just kind of lost my train of thought there. <laughs> what was I saying? Okay, I guess overall, regardless of the point is... Uh, improvement is not something that you'll notice immediately. It's something you see over time. You have to give yourself time enough to do it. I have a rule where you cannot beat yourself up over your art until a month later. Like, you have to just do this stuff slowly. Maybe if you have to wait a week before you can do it. But distance yourself from those thoughts as much as you can. Do it slowly. Do it in ways. Do it in processes that make you feel comfortable um, and that you feel are doable. You know, you can't be like, oh, I'm not going to complain for a whole year. Because it's almost impossible. Like, yeah. But if you can do it for like a day or an hour and a week and then, you know, just slowly build up to it and just allow yourself to feel better. And then when you're a bit better at your artwork or you feel like you're a bit further, then, you know, go a little bit harder on yourself because you're just trying to improve. And you know the difference between tearing yourself down and just trying to improve your artwork. All right. So and now we have some more questions. Those two were kind of similar. So now we have a, a little bit different. Uh, yeah, I kind of went over the art envy. So the next one is, I feel like I can't pose a character even with a stick. And then the other one is still the same as kind of I'll never get, uh, one negative thought is when that I'll never get better uh, and will my skill, you know, improve. And I feel like that's still what I answered before. So we're just going to go kind of to the, uh, I can't pose a character even if it's a stick. Um, I agree with you. I feel like I can't pose. I just looked at my recent, uh, or more of my artwork and felt like, I just looked at it and was like, man, that's really stiff. Oof. Ooh. Uh, what I would say to you is what I tried to do when I just started was try to look at model poses because a lot of those photographers, they know what they're doing. Uh, they know the composition that has to go with it, so they're kind of carrying over composition with you. And composition is something I feel that's kind of learned in photography. Uh, it's like the three three by three box method. I learned that immediately because I did photography, so it was kind of like, oh, okay. Um, there are lines that you want to make to the eyeballs and things like that. There are ways to make your art interesting without necessarily making the pose the most amazing thing in the world. If you tilt your artwork a little bit, it adds motion. So let's say they're standing up straight. Uh, if you tilt it like just a little to the left, the art is now more dynamic. It's really weird, but there are ways to improve it without necessarily improving the pose immediately. 
And also, you know, just keep working at the post. Uh, I need to do this a lot more, uh, and it's kind of a thing that people say, but gesture drawing. And it's really important because it kind of shows shape and flow in the artwork. And it's really difficult to understand, at least it was for me when I started. So I definitely, that's why I said I have to put it in practice more so now because I kind of get it. But seeing that flow, seeing the C curves and the S curves and the art make it smooth on the eyes, and it will help you out. I think the one issue, though, is, and it kind of goes back to the other one, is uh, I just think when we see our own artwork, we don't see it like other people would. Uh, what I like to do when I'm drawing is I like to flip my canvas completely upside down because then it gives me a different perspective of how someone might see my artwork. It's like when you flip your art to see the errors on it. Uh, if you didn't know that, if you flip your artwork, uh, it makes it more obvious to your brain about the errors that are there. Uh, but if you flip your artwork around upside down, it kind of gives like a whole different view on it. And sometimes it looks even like a little bit better than what you thought it looked like. So I'd go with that. Uh, it feels like to me, it's a little bit of both. It, Cause it always seems to be a little bit both for people, um, for all of us. It, like it, it just doesn't really change too much. It just kind of goes away a little bit more, but even with the big artists again, they still deal with it. So you're not alone. We're all here with you, man. We're all, we're all here with you. Uh, the next one is, again, I guess the negativity as well. Again, the negativity as well. Like, so I said, so there's, there's a lot of people right now. Just, we're all, <laughs> we all feel a little down about our art, but you remember, it's whatever, man. Uh, we're going to have to put that in a shirt. It's whatever. Negativity shows up. It's whatever, man. We're learning. We're trying. We're getting through it. It's not that big of a deal, you know? We all, we all start somewhere, man. We all got to start somewhere. Otherwise, you never take that first step. You're never going to get the opportunity at all. All the shots you miss is the shots you don't take. Uh, it's just... It's gonna go with it. Uh, so here's here's a different one. Um, being afraid of negative uh, negativity from non-constructive critics, the inability to draw some things. So I guess that kind of goes with the poses from before. But the interesting and new part is the negativity from critiques. And the issue is uh, being able to difference... You know, being able to tell the difference between... A negative critique and a critique that is just, you know, just for the artwork. Uh, so, here's the issue. It's kind of two things. So, it's partially the fact that I do agree with you. It's really rude of them to just do that because they just like to tear other people down and make themselves feel better. And then, on the flip side, we have to get thicker skin. And that's always that's always so easy to say. And I, I hate when people say it like that, too, because they're always like, oh, you know, you just brush off those comments and you won't even feel them anymore. But it's more so the fact of just accepting the comments in a way. Uh, you know, you don't have to be like, oh, I do I do suck and I should go jump off a lake or something like that. But, like, maybe there is something bad about it. Clearly, if they're making the comments, there's something that's not great with it. Um, and I just got to figure out what, and that's it. And the moment I change that, you know, everything's good. It's like when people used to tell me, oh, your faces are terrible. Well, then I know that you don't hate my bodies when I draw. You only hate the faces. You're not so mad about the hair. It's just the faces. So all I got to do to really improve right now is the part you guys hate the most, which is the faces. You got to turn those negative comments because they're always going to go for the part that they know is the weakest, which is great for you because now you know what to do with it. Like, you know, they could just say, oh, you're a terrible artist, go jump in the lake. You know, that that's not going to help you much. <laughs> but uh, if they're like, oh, man, you draw the ugliest faces. Well, now I know I need to draw better faces. <laughs> you could just, then you have nothing to say. Then what are you going to say? Oh, uh, your face is improved, but now your hands look bad. Like, you're only helping me at that point, you know? You got you to gotta turn it around. You got to turn around your situations and your views on uh, when people say things. It can be a little harsh if you hear it from somebody that you really like admire in a way. Um, I've had that happen before, and it really kind of crushed my art for like a week or so. I it was kind of like, oh man, that sucks, you know? I've been trying to draw because you've motivated me so much to draw, and now it's kind of like, oh well, you know, get out of here. <laughs> <I'm> just, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna go sit in the corner now. <laughs> but like, uh, it's just funny that you can really use these negative comments in just a positive light and they don't they don't need to know that you're gonna turn it around don't go bragging to them like oh you giving me my trap card and now I'm gonna use it against you that that's always like that always shows you're more offended about the thing than you would be otherwise to me it's always like if I have to say it afterwards like whatever um, but you know I, I get that stuff with just uh, I get that stuff with just regular artwork 
I get that stuff with the way I promote, because uh, I comment on people's comment sections now and then, and then people are like, oh, well, I don't understand, where are you using that to grow? And it's like, well, one, it benefits the channel, you see, I'm doing it right now, the thing I just said, that you're really sensitive about it, so you start defending yourself, <laughs> but uh, let me let me finish my, my self-defense of myself, let me finish my, I'm not butt hurt, but, um, <laughs> you know, it helps out channels, if you comment on people's channels. Uh, the more comments they get, so the more people tell me that they hate that I do it, the more they're actually helping the channel, uh, because that channel's getting more comments, which just push them further in the algorithm. The longer it takes you to respond to my comment, means that you're watching more of the video than you might, you might be otherwise, or it might keep you on for a second longer than they need, uh, and some other things like that. There's a lot of benefits to certain things like that, but people aren't always going to see the way you see things, and it sucks. You want to understand people. You want people to understand you. We all just want people to understand each other's mindsets. But we can't, to some degrees. There's things we can agree about. There's things that we can, uh, you know, enjoy together. But not everyone's going to enjoy it. It's just the natural way things are. So people are going to have negative thoughts about your artwork. But you have to understand, too, people are going to have positive effects about your artwork. It's also funny that we don't weigh negativity the same we weigh positivity. When you hear a compliment, you're kind of like, oh, well, thank you, you're just being nice. But when they're being negative, you take it as like, oh, that's the full truth. Like, that's the, that's the only thing they're talking about. It's, it must be real, because they want it to, like, it's funny how we, we do that. And I'm not specifically talking about you, I'm talking about all of us in general, because I do it all the time. It's just, it's so funny how we will take negativity as the all truth there is no other answer <laughs> but when we take positivity well obviously they're lying they just want to make me feel better I couldn't be <laughs> I couldn't be a better version I couldn't be a good artist oh my gosh they must be lying like what if they just really like your artwork <laughs> so yeah I would say you know weigh your positive and negatives uh, make sure you're not putting too much value in the negatives use the negatives as some hints because sometimes in negativity there is truth um, I, I think because you said non-constructive critics, so you clearly, I think, know the difference of it. You just don't like having to hear, you know, it, it's kind of scary to have to hear a bunch of negative comments. And again, I've been there, Reddit tore me a, a new one, uh, with that NAMI artwork. So uh, when I did it again, I was kind of like really hesitant to do it. <laughs> a lot of your art looks like Big Mouth, you know, all that kind of stuff, your anime Big Mouth, um... Looks like a dude who just came to draw hentai, so your proportions are terrible and junk like that. Why are you drawing big heads? You know, just stuff like that. And they were right. Again, that's again. I'm trying to really push that point. Those critiques, because they still mentioned things they hated about it, they were still pointing out things they obviously saw. So they were right. It was just, had it been me in their shoes, I would have just been like, hey man, you know, if you look at your, you know, if you look at the head of your artwork, it's, you know, it's not, you might want to work on it just a little bit, you know, like, I would have been trying to, like, at least ease them to it, <laughs> but now nah, they were just like, nope, we're doing this, <laughs> we're doing this right now, <laughs> get over here, <laughs> oh, no, oh, my gosh, um, do we have any more questions, was that all the questions right now, I mean, it's been almost, like, 30 minutes, so, it's not like it was short, but, is that all the questions, I thought? There were some more. Maybe it's just because some of the questions, you know, they're, the, they're kind of the same. They're kind of like the, I feel bad about my artwork kind of stuff. So I guess, yeah, guys, you know, it's it's just about taking everything in strides. You're not perfect. you got to allow yourself to be a flawed individual. We are, we're all human beings. We all have, you know, flaws and junk. No one's going to, no one's perfect here. We all have things that we're not proud of and things that we've done that we're kind of ashamed of and, you know, we all have things that we're dealing with, but just know, like, you're not alone. Clearly, you're not alone. You've seen, there's about, like, 30, uh, not 30 questions, I'm so stupid. There's about 15 questions there on Instagram, and I clearly didn't get, you know, everybody's perspective. I have 9,000 followers on Instagram, so I clearly didn't get everybody's ideas of their stuff. I just got the people, you know, were okay with talking about their issues publicly to other people in that kind of sense. You have to just give yourself some leeway. We're not perfect. You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. Failure makes better. Um, trying not to bring my I'm trying not to bring my religion too much in this stuff. Uh, but some pastor that I knew uh, brought up the words that uh, rejection is just direction. So when you're di when you're rejected by something, I guess it's an all around principle, so it should be okay. I just don't want to. I don't want. I don't like shoving my stuff down other people's throats. It bothers me. Um, but Give me a second, my, my alarm went off again. Uh, 
when you're rejected by something or when you when you find yourself in a place that doesn't work out how you would like it to you shouldn't take it as this is the end you should look and go well there's a, is there another road now maybe there's a reason i didn't get this maybe there's a reason i'm not here yet maybe there's just time that i need to spend to build my character whether whatever you believe in a sense uh, if you just think it's fate whatever i feel like people get to places they need to be when it's time to get there i know that i probably couldn't handle the same amount of pressure had i gotten where i am currently with my mindset a year ago i, I don't i don't know if i could have done it because i was still a bit sensitive about things there's certain things right now like selling a t-shirt and stuff like that i feel too nervous about because I, I wouldn't want it to be bad i've been on youtube before and things didn't go so great they were okay, but they didn't go so great, and it would have it would have demotivated me when I heard all the negativity and stuff. I, I definitely wasn't able to handle it like I can now with a lot of things. Now, usually, I just kind of go, okay, well, thank you, and try to go on with it. Or if they say something kind of, you know, snarky and responsive, I'll make some snarky comment back because it's funny. Um, what it, Someone just said it recently on a video, uh, and if he sees it, shout out to you, my man. Um, <laughs> he's like, oh, um, clout chaser. You call me a clout chaser. And then I was like, oh, I want to be Shrek, because his profile had Shrek in it. But, like, you know, it's not that serious. It's not that big of a deal. You know, people are, people are, some people might just not like you, just because they don't like you at all. Sometimes you'll just draw something, and it's going to look like chicken scratch. But, like, you have to work some of these days out. You have to have some of these people out of the way of your life. There's some days you're just not going to do well at all. I, there's some days I picked up my pencil, and I just could not draw anything and it frustrated me and i had to wait a day or two and just let my mind get back to normal where i could do it again uh, it's just how life works and you can't be upset with how life is you just gotta roll with it you know hopefully this was you know pretty helpful for you guys um i put my patrons in the front but now this is we're talking about positivity in a sense uh thank you to the patrons because i don't really have any funds right now <laughs> And every time, you know, they give their little donations and stuff like that, it really helps. Um, you know, it's just a dollar fifty from people, but even just that dollar fifty, it adds up. Like, hopefully later on, if I get big enough, um, you know, if I can get like a thousand people to donate a dollar fifty, that's good. You know, that really helps out and it helps me, you know, make my art my career in a sense. But I want to also make sure that I'm not doing it, like, really lazily, and it's just like, oh, well, you guys owe me money, because I make content. Like, I want to make it good enough that you guys want it, but at the same time, you know, I still want to, I still want to, I still want to <laughs> <I still wanna, laughs> eat. <laughs> um, not to say I'm not eating, okay? I just want to eat, you know, like, if I can go out and get sushi every now and again, I'd, I'd like to do that. But yeah, no, you guys, I, I just wanted to talk to you guys and, you know, let you guys feel okay. I know it was really hard when I started my art journey stuff, and it didn't have much people to talk to. It was just some podcast that made me feel a little better. But, you, you know, you guys, you're part of a crew. You're part of this whole little army thing we got going here. Uh, there's 3,000 on YouTube, uh, 9,000 on Instagram, about to be probably 10,000 soon, um, and 1,000 on Twitter. You know, there's, you're not alone. We're all here with you, man. We all got to struggle. It's whatever. Failure. What well, was my... I, I just screwed up my own catchphrase. Failure. It's whatever. Because we're all getting better. Got to put that in a shirt. <laughs> you know, don't, don't worry about it too much. Just have fun with it. Uh, even if you want to make it a career, zone that out a little bit and try to think about having fun with it. You know, not all of us have the choice. Some of us are in different life positions right now. But most of my audience is 18 to 32, as I've seen. So some of you are probably lying about your age. <laughs> so I'm assuming some of us, you know, most of us are sort of towards the either beginning of our adulthood, sort of getting closer to the middle of our adulthood, or you're probably still a teenager and you lied about your age. <laughs> For shame. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I guess I'm going to end it now. We're almost at like 40 minutes. But thanks guys for coming out. If you made it this far, really do appreciate it. You know, leave a comment down. Say, I made it this far. True crew. True crew. Um, I always leave that out there because it's nice to know, you know, if people watch the whole video or not. Um, it's funny too, even with my videos. I'm trying to think of ways to make the drawing just more interesting. But it seems a lot of people, like, with their art videos, they just, they just put the drawing up. They don't even do the intro. I like doing the intro because I feel like it, you know, hypes up the artwork or whatever. 
But a lot of people don't even do that. They just put like anime music and the artwork, and they'll get tons of views. <laughs> so I know my guys. I might I might have to start <laughs> doing the intros. <laughs> nah, I, I like doing the intros for you guys. This one's obviously not gonna have an intro. Um, it's the cosplayer art of. Is it Knee Chameleon? I don't I don't know how to pronounce her name specifically. Uh, but I've been doing a lot more cosplay art to try to better my uh, understanding of the face in a way. Uh, realism studies always help improve, in my opinion. Uh, usually, when I see a significant growth, it's because I've done a lot of realism, and so it helped me understand how things actually work. I think people underestimate how complicated the human face and body is. It's really complicated. Uh, once you start to learn what it is. Like, uh, the elbows being the same length as the uh, rib cage and the head only being, I mean, the shoulders only being, like, half of the head on each side. Like, there's a lot of stuff you have to remember, and with practice, you'll just, it sits in your mind better. But, you know, it's just, we're all working at it. Uh, thanks, guys. I really do appreciate you guys. I really do appreciate the fact that you guys have helped me get this far. Uh, life's been a little weird for me recently. I had a very big inconvenience in December. Uh, and that December was really rough, <laughs> but January is looking pretty good right now, so I'm, I'm really enjoying that. Uh, but it's definitely thanks to you guys. I've I've been having a lot more to do, and I've definitely been feeling more motivated about my stuff. And it's it's cool to see that we've gotten this far. Uh, if you guys really do enjoy these videos, you know, tell me, and I'll do some more. We'll put them. I'll let you guys, I guess, maybe vote on it or something like that. And uh, share the videos, you know. Sharing the videos really helps me out. If you can't, you know, if you can't support me on Patreon or anything like that, don't feel bad, you know. It's money is money, but, like, talking to people and your attention and other things like that and just making a connection, I feel is a lot more important uh, in a way. And you can always just, you know, support with just liking or retweeting or, you know, commenting. All those things help. Like, they help a lot. And people really seem to undervalue that when they talk about that with their fans. So, yeah, you know, you guys, thanks a lot. I really do appreciate you guys. I hope you have a good day, and whatever, out. See you guys.